So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. For instance, I was driving to a board meeting and I was praying, Lord, like Isaiah, here I am. What did Isaiah say? Send me, use me. Instead of saying, bless me, I said, Lord, if you have somebody in need, somebody who needs a blessing, use me to be a blessing. Instead of saying, help me today, Lord, I said, use me today, Lord. And when you pray that prayer, God gives you opportunities because there are plenty of people stressed about around you. They are stressed about economy. They are stressed about diseases and diabetes and depression. They are stressed about family and divorce and children. They are stressed. You follow me? About politics. They are stressed about anything in the world. They are just stressed. And you think because you see them and they say, hey, how are you doing good? How are you doing good? You think they are good. They are not good. I was at the church, parenthesis, I was at the church preaching, and one church member comes, happy Sabbath, pastor. I said, happy to you too. I said, is it happy for you? He said, yes. I said, how are you doing? Good. Your family, good. Your job, good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bye. After I finished preaching, he comes to me, pastor, can we talk? Yes. Come in my office. He comes in my office, says, you know, my wife left me. I said, I ask you, how is your family? He said, good. He said, well, that's how we say it. We don't mean it. <laughs> and he said, I also lost my job. I said, I asked you, how is your job? And you said, good. He said, pastor, that's a greeting. We don't mean it. Really? Right. You understand what I mean? People put a fake mask, but people are stressed. And so you don't just go around focusing on your plans. I have this list for today. I have to do this and this and this and this. The spirit prophecy says, listen carefully. Every morning, listen carefully. Jesus made no plans for himself. Why? Well, he doesn't care because he didn't have a house, he didn't have a job, he didn't have a family. Really? He was a human like you or me, from a human perspective. Not because he didn't have a brain, he was incapable to, or he didn't have worries, or he was always fed and never hungry, never tired. He says, Jesus made no plans for himself, but every morning he received the plans from the Father for that day. Period. Next sentence. So should we. Present our plans before the Lord, ready to fulfill them or to give them up according to his will, and then seek God's plan for us for the day. And then she says, the Lord in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. Not referring to the plan of salvation. It is plural and it is present tense. That means that I know the plans, plural, I have for you today. God has plans for you today, every day. People don't care God's plan for them. They just care God's blessing for their own plans. Instead of going to God, asking his blessing for your plans, you need to go to God and say, here are my plans. I'm ready to give them up. Give me your plans. Every time I ask God blessing on my plans, I, get, I go with one problem and I get 20 problems. And it gets worse. Every time I give up myself and my plans, and I mean that, I have a bunch of examples, every time... I seek his plans. He blesses my plans without me even struggling to do them. When you go and say, Lord, use me today. That's what you pray when you say, thy will be done. Show me your will. Show me your plans for today. Use me. There are people around me that I'm so busy with my agenda that I don't even see them. Open my eyes, open my ears to see people who are stressed, people who struggle, people who don't know you, people who are in divorce, people who are sick. Open my eyes. Show me your plan. May your will in my life happen today. You understand? That's what you pray when you say, thy will be done. You understand? And when you say that, when you pray that, God is going to open your eyes and give you opportunities. And as you use them, you have a story. And as you use them, God says, because you serve me, I'm going to bless you so you could bless others. And I'm going to keep blessing you so you could be a blessing for others. So here I am. I drive to a board meeting. And I am praying, Lord, if there is somebody who needs today, show me your plan. I want to do your will today. <laughs> Thy will be done in my life today. And as I am praying and driving to a board meeting, my wife calls me and says, honey, 
Gucci is vomiting blood. You know who is Gucci? My dog. He sleeps around my head like a crown on my pillow. If I try to push him, he pushes me back. <laughs> I'm going to show you more pictures tomorrow. My wife just sent me a picture of Gucci because I worry because he's 13 years old already. And my wife says, look how nice, how sweet he is. And oh, it breaks my heart. I love this puppy, you know. And so my wife says, Gucci is vomiting blood. So I call my head elder and they say, hey, I'm not coming to a board meeting. I have an emergency. Take care of the board. I turn my car around, go home. What does the Bible say in Romans chapter 8? All things. So I turn around, go home, take Gucci, go to the vet. But I am in a suit and a tie because I was going to a board meeting. As I go to the vet, the vet says, Mr. Goya, you are in a tie and a suit. I said, what? Is it against the law? <laughs> he says, no, but hey, we have never seen you in a suit. Where are you going? A meeting at work. Meetings Thursday night at 7, 7.30, whatever, p.m.? I said, yeah. Why do you work? I'm a pastor. Why don't you tell us? I said, should I say, hello, I'm a pastor? You never asked. <laughs> he says, well, you just came in the right moment. I said, yes, because my dog is vomiting. He says, no, because we are talking what happens to the animals when they die. Do they go to heaven or do they go to hell in the fire? And I said, take care of the dog, and then I give you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> they took the dog, they found that he ate something outside and got something stuck in his neck. They took care of him. And then we talked, and I gave them the state of the dead lesson. <laughs> and, hey, dogs, people, don't go to heaven, don't go to hell. They just go in the ground, and they rest, and they sleep, and the sleep know nothing. The sleep, the dead know nothing. <laughs> and so he says, whoa, we never knew that. So what then what happens? I said, well, the Bible says there will be a resurrection. He says, well, you need to come tomorrow so we check if the dog is healing. And you tomorrow tell us about resurrection. So next day I go back. And now is three doctors, another two nurses, and another two, two ladies that are in the front desk there, plus two, three other people that came with their dogs. They are all listening to the second coming lesson. And he says, we never knew that. So then what's about millennium? So I go again next week and I give them a lesson about millennium. And he says, then what about salvation? So I go again next and what about obedience? So I go again for 10 weeks. I go every week and give them lessons. When we did evangelism, they all came to evangelism. Why? Because I said, Lord, if there is somebody right now needing help, use me today. I made myself, a, here I am. I made myself available. And God said, okay, I'm going to let the dog have a problem because I love these people. You follow me? And these people, right now, this moment, they are attacking, they are struggling. And an angel says, I want to help them. And God says, go. And the angel goes to me and turns me around and says, you should not be there. You should be there. The saints can have a board meeting by themselves. They don't need you. You should be there. You follow me? What if we all, when we say, thy will be done, we say, Lord, I want to do your will. Show me your will. You understand? And we are willing to listen. When God says, turn around, you don't say, but I have a board meeting. You turn around. You understand? That means that you are ready to sacrifice your score, your job, your life, your board meeting, whatever God says, and you trust that if you do what he says, he will take care of you. Right. And I've experienced it again and again and again. God never failed. I just know before coming here, I talked to my daughter-in-law, and she they called her to give a conference in nuclear physics in California to fly from Pennsylvania to California on Sabbath. And they said, your future depends on it. And she talked to me, she says, my future depends. I've been so many years in schools. What should I do? I said, you ask me? Don't you know? I said, I do know. It's just my future. I said, no. It's more than that. It's your relationship with God. I said, God gave his life for you. Wouldn't you give your future for him? So she made the decision. She told them, I'm not coming. They said, it's impossible. You are not coming. You lose. You're supposed to be the director of the program. You lose everything. She said, willing to lose. We prayed. We put her job in God's hands. And she called me tonight. And she says, you will not believe what happened. They changed the program so I would be there. And they said, if you don't come on Sabbath next week, then we are going to change everything so you, sh so you could come. We need you. And she says, I'm so happy that I was ready to sacrifice her. Because now I don't lose God. And I don't lose job. And I don't lose future. If you honor God, he honors you. Yeah. You understand? But when you say, thy will be done, 
You need to know him in order to love him enough to obey him, in order to trust him enough to do whatever he says if it doesn't make sense. Don't try to understand. Try to know. Do you understand what I mean? Don't try to understand what God says. Try to know God in order to obey, in order to trust. That's what it means, thy will be done. You need to know him, and you need to know his will. Therefore, you need to spend time, and you need to listen. And then you need to make him a priority and make yourself available to do his will. Do you follow what I said? All this stuff? What time is it? Any? Five minutes. Five minutes. Hey, hallelujah. We can tell another story. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> For instance, I have a friend. You may have heard the story who listened to the prayer seminar, and he said, I'm going to do that every day from now on. He has a big business in Michigan somewhere. I'm not going to tell you where. But he started to pray every morning, Lord, I am ready to surrender my business, my family, my life. If you need me today, show me your will, your plans for today, and here I am. I'm going to do whatever you say. Here I am. Use me today. That means thy will be done in my life today. And you know, you pray that prayer and nothing happens for a week or two because God doesn't talk like politicians. They talk all the time and say nothing. God talks only when he has something to say. But if you never listen, you will not hear when he talks. But if you listen all the time, you are ready, awake, you will hear. So this guy is driving on Interstate 94 on snow. It has been snowing for several days. And he's driving on snow and praying, Lord, Use me today. And as he was driving, he hears a voice in his head. Look to the right. And he looks to the right. And he says to his wife, honey, there is a bump far away in the field in the snow. And she says, the whole field is bumps. He says, no, no, there is a white bump. She says, the whole field is white because of the snow. He says, no, 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 God told me to look. She says, how in the world? Look, I am looking and all I see is snow. He says, no, 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 I know God's voice. So he went to the no U turn, okay, in the middle of the interstate. He turns around. <laughs> he goes back to the previous exit. He turns around and he comes slow and he sees far away in the field a bump. He stops on the shoulder and he walks there. In the snow, an old man, gray hair, white robe, fallen, snowed over. He has a band here that says his name and then says Alzheimer's. The man left the nursing home to go home, and he forgot what home is. So he fell and he froze, and he was knowed over. So our friend took him, runs to the car, runs to the closest hospital, and the doctor says, a few more minutes would have been too late. You got there in the last second. Because he says, Lord, I want to do your will today. And God said, okay, this is my will. And he told me when he called me, he says, Pastor, I had an important meeting that I missed. And when God said, look to the right, I said, what? I'm going to be late for the meeting. But now I am happy because I lost nothing being late. They just started the meeting later. No problem. The doctor called the daughter of the old man. The daughter comes and says, I'm so happy you didn't hit him with a car. He says, how could I hit him with a car? He was not on the road. He was in the field. She says, what? Didn't he cross the road? No. He was in the field, fallen, snowed over, covered. And she says, how in the world did you see him? He says, if I tell you, you think that I am crazy. Tell me. God told me to look to the right. She said, you're dreaming. God talks to you? He says, yes. She says, God talks to you? He says, yeah. That's what the Bible says. My sheep know my voice. That's how the Bible says, Isaiah, your ears would hear a voice behind you saying, this is the path. He said, here, God talked to me and he told me to look to the right. And I saw a bump in the field and I knew God told me. So I looked there and I found your father. And she says, I want to join your church. He says, you don't know my church. She says, I don't need to. <laughs> he said, but we don't eat pork. She says, I eat whatever you eat. I don't care. He said, but we don't worship on Sunday. 
I worship whatever you worship. I don't care. Then why do you want to join my church? And she said, because all churches have doctrines and politics and theory. You have God. I need a church that has God. <laughs> you understand? Thy will be done. Means that every single Christian should make himself or herself available every single day and say, here I am, Lord. Show me your will. And I'm going to make you a priority above my plans and do your plan first. And then I'm going to trust that you will take care of me. Because I, if I put you first, you said the other things will be provided. Does it make sense? There is no way to experience God's power, to have an experience with God, if you are not willing to do his will. You say, I do my will, but I would like to have an experience with God. Impossible. You need to do what he says to have an experience with him. Do you hear me? So God is actually challenging you to do that. Now, when you pray that, don't just say, Pastor, I prayed for two days and nothing happened. You don't pray that looking for a miracle. You pray that looking for surrender. Looking for knowledge of God, for relationship. And whenever he talks, it's his business. You don't tell God, you have to talk God. You don't tell him when to talk and when to keep quiet. He talks whenever he wants you just need to be listening all the time. Does it make sense? So don't look for a voice. Just make yourself available and try to know him. Because when he has a need and you are ready, he's going to tell you what to do and he's going to be pretty clear, crystal clear. Okay? I have a lot more stories related to this. A lot more stories. We just don't have the time. <laughs> we don't have the time. But I tell you, when you start to do that, you start having stories quite a lot. Quite a Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm tell you. I'm tempted. But no, no, no. <laughs> it sits on, on my tongue, you know, just one more, but no. <laughs> so, if you are here, and if I am here, and if you hear this, it means that the Holy Spirit is talking to you personally. And if the Holy Spirit is talking to you, challenging you to go one step deeper, you don't want to play games with the Holy Spirit. You want to say, yes, here I am. You understand? Don't worry about how, when. Let God worry for you. All you have to worry is to make yourself available daily. Mm -hmm. To be honest when you say, thy will be done in my life today. Show me thy will. That's all you need to worry about. You need to worry about knowing him, loving him, making yourself available to him. He will take care of the other things better than you think. You will see when you get there. Don't try to stress about things that you have no control over, okay?